A little over a month ago, Deja Vu struck Congress as they underwent their ritual debt ceiling brinksmanship. This time, the players fought over what concessions would be made as the U.S. approached the deadline of $31.4 trillion in total debt outstanding, while Yellen warned of severe austerity measures that the Treasury would have to undertake in order to avoid default. As usual, the game was played with the typical jawboning and accusatory statements so often held by our politicians, but the conclusion was one we had never seen before. On Saturday, June 3rd, President Joe Biden signed an agreement that lifted the debt ceiling completely for two years and eliminated spending caps after 2025, allowing unlimited government spending. The debt issue would be revisited in 2025. On the Treasury's own reports, they now list the statutory debt limit as zero. I guess they didn't have enough room to put infinity down. From fiscal year 2019 to 2021, Spending witnessed a substantial increase of approximately 50%, mainly attributable to the effects of the COVID-19 pandemic. Now, the debt level is increasing faster, and this time, it's occurring without a crisis to spur massive government borrowing. This removal of even the faintest whiff of fiscal constraint has truly allowed the Treasury to plunge deeper into the debt black hole. In a shocking turn of events, the national debt has increased by over $1.1 trillion in 41 days. It now stands at a staggering $32.47 trillion, a growth rate of $31 billion a day. This recent tsunami of new treasury issuances could be indicative that the United States is entering what is called a debt spiral. This occurs when an entity such as a person, business, or country finds itself needing to borrow money in order to fulfill its existing financial obligations. When you are caught in a debt spiral, the primary focus is on servicing your debt rather than making progress and paying it off. As a result, debt remains stagnant or continues to grow. With no extra cash available, every time you need to make a purchase, you are likely to accumulate even more debt. This is what the United States is entering. At $32 trillion of federal debt, that means if rates stay at 5%, the US will eventually have to pay $1.6 trillion a year in interest expense alone to service the debt. This doesn't even include principal payments. For example, let's take a look at the shortest term debt securities that are maturing this month. Per the Treasury's monthly report, around $1.17 trillion in bills will mature in July. All of this debt was recently issued, and thus the step change in interest rates won't be too severe. As these debt securities mature, the Treasury pays them off by issuing new ones, rolling the debt forward similar to how options or futures traders roll contracts week to week or month to month. The problem is, all these securities are issued at higher rates and thus cause more interest expense to be incurred across the balance sheet. This is fueling a massive rise in interest expense paid by the United States. As the rate rises, the amount of new debt issued must rise in tandem. This means the total debt figure rises even more, and thus more interest expense is incurred in a devastating feedback loop. What worsens the situation is that this process is non-linear, not only logically from the compounding interest, but from other feedback loops as well. In June, the total interest expense paid for the last 12 months hit $852 billion, a 28% compounded annual growth rate. If it keeps growing at this pace, we will be paying $1.78 trillion in interest alone in 2025, and $2.28 trillion in 2026. The U.S. is already paying record amounts in interest expense, and the Fed hasn't even finished its hiking cycle. What happens if higher for longer proves to be true, and more of the $32 trillion debt load gets refinanced at 5%? Per the Treasury's own report, in June 2023, interest on the national debt was $122 billion. Total spending in June was $646 billion. That means that 18% of all spending is just now going to pay interest on the debt. In the first half of 2023, the federal deficit was nearly $1 trillion. This is only six months, and it's not even during a recession. The problem the central planners face is that of a true dilemma. If they raise rates to fight inflation, they're only accelerating the debt spiral. However, if they lower rates and begin QE, this will in time cause more inflation, which will by default increase treasury expenditures as the prices of labor, infrastructure, healthcare, and military equipment rises. The markets are sniffing this out. In early June, the 10-year treasury broke 4% a key resistance level seen in February 2023 before the bank failures of Silicon Valley and First Republic, as well as in September 2007. 
Even more concerning, on July 6, the yield on the two-year Treasury note rose to a 16-year high. Traders remained undeterred and continued to anticipate further rate hikes. Fed futures at the time pointed to a 92% chance that the central bank would raise rates by a quarter point later in the month. They were proven right. Ironically, any rate hike just exacerbates the situation. The Peruvian bull debt paradox will prove to be true. The more they hike, the higher interest expense rises on the treasury, which means the closer they must move to restarting QE. The only escape from this conundrum is severe fiscal austerity. This means slashing military, infrastructure, and social security payments, while at the same time hiking tax rates and eliminating loopholes, especially for corporations and wealthy benefactors who profit from the current lopsided tax code. This is politically untenable, so our leaders will continue to lead us across the warp space-time and closer to the singularity. The Fed has trapped the Treasury in a black hole of its own design. Crushed by the financial gravity of the debt, the government itself is inching towards default. Determined to stave off deflationary collapse, Yellen and Powell will work hand in hand to create more money and credit and shove it into the coffers of the financial system. The Congressional Budget Office estimates in four years there will be $38 trillion of federal debt outstanding. The debt clock, however, predicts that if it keeps growing at current rates, there will be $43 trillion of debt outstanding. That's just by 2027. The wave of debt issuance will grow to be exponential. There isn't enough demand, so the Fed will step in and print the difference, unleashing feedback loops long forgotten by the economic elites who rule our country. This will only worsen the crisis and increase the growth rate of the money supply, causing inflation and dragging us deeper into the wormhole. What they do not understand is that we're not approaching the event horizon. We're already past it.